What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Cardinal Secrets Masterclass. Within this masterclass, I'll be teaching the top three secrets about how you can start your Cardinal business and just leave your job forever. Um, that's kind of my goal, man. I went from working my job to now being where I'm at to now to be free and gaining my time and freedom back just by this business, man. So I want to be able to teach you guys and help you do that same thing. So this is what this class will be about. I'm not here to sell you. I'm not here to you. I don't want you to purchase nothing. I just want to give you the game. You guys go out there, execute, use this information, and hopefully be able to send me some screenshots and pictures to see your see your success and see where you've come. So if y'all ready, let's get to it, bro. Um, and let's just go ahead and get going. So, just to give you guys some background about who I am, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Y'all can see that. Um, just to give you guys some background about who I am, my name is Tawan Cole. Um, I am a car owner business owner. I am a coach, and then I'm also a man of faith. And I take that last one very, very, very seriously. All right, so I believe that God has blessed us with the opportunity to be on this earth, man. And I feel like all of us have something to learn from each other. And um, I'm just here to serve. That's, that's, that's my mission, and that's the statement. I got to help people who uh, were in my same position, struggling and trying to figure something out. And um, yeah, man, this is it. So definitely a man of faith. I believe in God wholeheartedly. And uh, yeah, man. So that's me. <laughs> um, so I know a lot of you guys may not know who I am. So I wanted to show you a little bit more. How did I get here? All right. So this is just me a couple years ago working my construction job. Listen, I did everything from drywall to plumbing to electricity. Um concrete, construction, everything. And this is used to be me most of the days. As you can see, I got dust in my hair. This is concrete dust all up in my nose, eyes. Listen, totally messed up, yeah. Totally messed up. And this is this is me over here as well, looking like the Michelin man. <laughs> you know, uh, that day I had to go through a crawl, like, crawl space and lay down plastic. plastic. So that is, if y'all don't know, that's under a house and like the, the, the ground where the house was built on, I had to go under there. Listen, it was crazy. Cockroaches, bugs, all type of stuff, man. And that was a huge day for me where I'm like, bro, I can't do this no more. Like this is this is not me. This is not it. So and I know a lot of you guys may be in this position right now or was in this position. I wanted just to show y'all this, to show y'all I'm not playing, like I really came from this. Um, my account looked like this multiple times. Multiple times. Like just like, bro, what am I gonna do? And chase with the overdraft free fees and all that, you know. So I was just in a bad spot, y'all. So this is um that's that's just where I was at. Just to give you guys and just be transparent, you know. So this was me. So I had a choice, right? So I had a choice. I either could stay the same, right, or I could go for better. I think all of us had that that time in our lives where we have this decision to be like, listen, I can either stay the same person and keep doing what I'm doing, or go for better. Right, and, and, and just have that split roll the test of our lives. So me in general, I said, man, listen, I'm going to have this. There are going to be jobs and people go forever need labor. Like, why not take this time right now and just go for something better? So I said, bro, this is my time. And I love this quote right here by Keisha J. Right, So she says, to choose to put yourself first and make you a priority. It's not selfish. It's necessary. So especially if you're like me right now um, or previously, whatever, like I always want to do things with, for my family. Right? That's, that's just me. That's just what's inside me. Like, get my mom's the house, the car, the whole nine. But then when I started to realize, listen, if I'm not in a position to do that, I'm never going to be able to bless her or bless the kids across the country that I want to be able to help feed one day or, you know, some homeless people. Like, I will never be able to do those things if I do not take the time right now to put myself first and develop myself, learn skills, and just get better. Like, that will never be, be able to happen. So just hearing this, like, was a switch for me, and it was like, Bro, like, I have to take this time for myself. And y'all have to do the same thing for yourselves as well. All right, so let me let y'all just see the journey, right? So this is the first car that I ever got uh, financed. It was a 2016 Toyota Corolla. Man, it felt like yesterday. Like, I'm pumped. I'm excited. I got the first car, and it just started rolling, All right? So after that, uh, after the Toyota Corolla, like, it got booked literally the fourth day, the third day I had it back home, and it was just gone. So I was like, oh, yeah, I can really do this. Right, let me turn it up a notch. Let me get a Camaro. All right, so I got the Camaro. The Camaro going good. And then, uh, as you guys can see, uh, I had the Camaro. And now I get like a 7 Series on a broker deal, which was I will talk to you guys about um, as, as well a bit later on in the video. But then I got a 2009 Nissan Altima. I paid $3,000 for Like, I, pay, I paid $3,000 for this car. And 
I know a lot of us may be in a moment where we like, bro, I, I want to get started, but I don't have the credit. I don't have a whole bunch of money. Listen, I paid $3,000 for this car. It was 09. It had about 130,000 miles on that thing. Scratched up seats, scratched up paint, and it will still rent it out, y'all. Like, there's people out there who need a vehicle just to go to eight point A to point B, right? And you can be that person that helps them. So don't feel like you got to get the nicest vehicle to get going. I started, I mean, that was probably like my second vehicle that I had in my fleet. And uh, the second or third, my bad. But I got that, and it was just being rented. So, man, you can start from anywhere. So, like I said, so I ended up getting that, ended up getting another uh, another vehicle. It was the Audi S5 on another broker deal. One of the smoothest, fastest cars that I ever drove. It's such a beautiful car. Uh, then I ended up getting a Toyota Corolla. Then I ended up getting a Nissan Altima. Then I ended up getting my dream car, my, my Chevy Corvette. Ah, oh, man, that's my dream car. But I'm going to keep going. So I ended up getting a Chevy Corvette. Then I got another Honda. Honda, Dodge Charger, Tesla, Cruze, K5, Camaro, another Corvette. Right? It, it was just, it all started to roll in. And it's all started, y'all, because I decided to go all in. Right? When I, when I said I was, I, was, I was at that split moment where I could either continue to do what I was doing, working my job, working the construction job, or I could go for better. Right when I did that, y'all, I got all those cars in like in a span of 11 months to a year. All those vehicles. Because I decided to go all in and put myself in positions to grow. And go all in on myself. You know what I mean? So, I'm telling y'all, it's super pivotal. It's so important. Uh, listen, learning how to start a car with a business allowed me to quit my job and have time and financial freedom. Right? Gave, giving me the ability to have my dream car. Um, go to Masterminds. Man, I paid 2500 uh, Twenty five hundred dollars to to get into this mastermind and to talk to other like minded individuals like myself. I would never been able to do that because if I was just working my construction job, I'm like, bro, that's way too much. But I put myself in position to do these things, right? Just by starting a car on a business, and also as well, like last last uh, November, which is my birthday, man, I just took a solo trip to DR, all off a of car on a business income. You know what I mean? Like just be able to do these things, man. Just off a of car on a business, y'all. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Right, and if if I would not have started my car on a business, I would not be standing in front of you today. It's helped me so much, and it helped me just transform my life, y'all. Right, and I will still be at that job, picking up the rocks, driving that dump truck, going to the oh man, like ah, thank you God, <laughs> like y'all, like y'all don't know, bro, like car rentals helped me a lot, man. Honestly, uh, man, just simply put, man, starting a car on a business changed my life forever. So, and I'm here today, man. I just want to teach y'all how y'all can do the exact same thing um, and, and hopefully be able to change y'all lives as well and change the people's in y'all lives too. All right. And I'm going to give you guys some people that I've been able to help over this journey too as well. So this is Haley. Uh, very interesting, interesting story about Haley, right? So she was a server. She was a server um, working fast food. She did it for a long time. Been doing it for like three years. And uh, she also was a college student, right? So she did the college courses. Uh, during the week and then was able to serve during the weekends just to be able to pay her bills and all those things, right? So she ended up coming to me and was like, hey, like, I want to get going with this. I just don't know where to start. And I see you doing your thing, but I don't have the time and none of that. I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and start. How much do you have to invest right now? And she was like, hey, man, listen, I only got $5,000 to go ahead and get going. I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and get going with that. Let's start with a cash card and moving that route. And then what I'll do for you I will rent the car out for you until you're able to get enough, generate enough income to be able to leave that job and have more time to run this business on your own. She's like, man, let's do it, right? So we ended up buying her. This is a 2015 Chevy Cruze. Uh, paid $5,000 for this vehicle, okay? And for this vehicle, I decided to list it for $400 a week, which generated $1,600 a month, okay? Um, and right after that, I'm going to speak on this uh, before we get into firing your boss. Uh, that's what she was making when it came to her job. Um, so essentially, she would work those couple of days a, a week on the weekend to, like I said, just afford to live in or whatever it may be. And off of one vehicle that she doesn't have to touch and maybe have to talk to a customer one time a week, she was able to replace that job's income in less than 30 days. Uh, I'm almost say 30 days. It's probably around 30 days or so when it started to kick in. I would say less than 60 for sure. Um, she was able to replace that job's income just by having this vehicle. All right? Find your boss. Like, fire them. I, nah, I'm good. Y'all don't deserve me no more. I'm on the bigger and better things, right? We always being grateful for sure, but uh, we gotta fire our bosses, man. And uh, I want another guy right here, bro. This is my dog right here, bro. Savion, listen, bro. Uh, he repeated me doing my thing for a while. He he doing his own clothing brand. 
Um, it's called Evil Twin Clothing. It's, uh, he's, he's killing over there. But he's been, he been, he been uh, seeing me do my thing for a while with the Cardinal Space. So he just just started asking me some questions about it, just seeing, like, how, how was it going? He was just peeping how it was moving for me. He was like, man, he was interested to in get into it. So ended up giving him just a couple jams. I mean, whenever he would hit me up, I try to help him out the best that I can. And uh, bro, like, took the information and used it. Right, so it's a lot of people out there who ha- who who will hear this information that I'm about to share with you guys in a few, and it was like, all right, yeah, whatever. But he took the information, just him taking the information and implementing those things. He just went to go get him two cars, right? And now those cars are generating him three thousand dollars every single month passively. He has to talk to these customers one time a week, right? Spending less than three hours a week on a job on, on a source of income that is paying him three thousand dollars a month. All right, it's crazy, man. Big shout out to my boy Savion. I don't know if you're going to be able to watch this or not, bro. But I'm proud of you, bro. Like, you're killing it for sure, man. So I just wanted to show y'all, man, it is possible, and uh, y'all can do it too as well. And I'm going to talk a little quickly about just the carbonal market size and the trends, right? So when it comes to 2030, um, 2030, you can see how much the increase is going to happen. It's literally going to double um, the market size of the carbonal space because people are going to forever need cars forever, y'all. Right, so you say you 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 could see here in in 2021 it was 30 billion, okay, <laughs> like it, and it says listen the carbon market size was valued at 116 billion dollars in 2022. So just imagine what it's gonna look like in 20, 20, 2030, right? As you can see, it's gonna be 11 percent increase when it comes to that man. It's it's, it's wild, right? So you, this is a market, it's in a growing market, and you're gonna forever be able to make money here. So, let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes a little bit, y'all. So, um, I know a lot of you guys may have seen these things, and these are car sharing apps, right? Ride sharing apps. You have Turo, Hire, Car, Get Around. Uh, just for now, we go, we go cut these out. I know these are good platforms. This is a, these places are pivotal points. I will always tell my students or just people who are interested in this space to start here because you're going to gain so much skills, here because now you have like a big brother or big sister who's able to help you with the marketing and all those things right but just for now we go x those out all right i just want to be very clear on that point because these are very good platforms and you'll make a ton of money but i want to show you three reasons why i decided to not use these platforms all right so the first one um this is straight off of Turo's uh, website and it shows you like the average income uh per vehicle that you may have within a fleet okay so and uh, as you guys can see, it's $52,000 average annual income of having five cars in your fleet. All right, $52,000. Now, with uh, I'll just put 25% here, which is one of Turo's, um, one of Turo's um, ratios when it comes to how much they will take and how much that you receive on each rental just for them providing the service for you. But I know one of the highest ones they have is a 90-10, so they will only take 10%. So let's just say out of this 52 you're looking around um, you, you're looking around fifty fifty two hundred dollars fifty two hundred dollars they'll take out um, of, of, of that budget per year so um, a Ford Focus 2015 Ford Focus on Turo is going for thirty 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 three dollars a day right so that's only two hundred and thirty one dollars a week that you will make it that you will be making from this vehicle Renting that exact same vehicle or a similar vehicle, as you guys can see on the private side, I did $1,600, right? So a complete, well, what we're looking at around four, because that'll be around 462, you're looking around uh, about 920, 920 or so. So you're making about $700 more doing it on a private side. That's number one, okay? And then also as well, there is no ownership, Okay, so Turo is keeping all the track of the data. They're keeping all the con- uh, they're keeping all the phone numbers and emails from these customers. So essentially, you really don't have a business, right? And that's why I want to tell you guys: you must build your own, right? Especially if you want to build generational wealth for your family. This is huge. Okay, so who here is ready to learn how to start a car rental business? So let's let's go ahead and get going, right? So secret number one. This is what y'all been waiting for. I know it took a little minute. I just want you guys to give you a little intro about why I like car rentals, uh, private on the private side, and also as well, who am I, right? So you guys can get to know me a little bit better. But let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, how to get cars for free? I know a lot of us may be in positions where you're working hard, you've been trying to build your credit, you don't have the money to invest, all these things, da 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 da. How can you get cars for free? 
right? So, and there's only two ways to do this. So you either can be a broker or you can do a joint venture. And I'm going to explain those two very deeply in these uh, next couple of slides for you guys. So a broker, right? A broker, a broker is a person or a firm who arranges transactions between a buyer and a seller. This may be done for a commission when the deal is executed. Okay, so in layman's terms, a broker is essentially just a middleman. So you either know customers who need a vehicle or you know car rental business owners who need customers. And all you're doing, you're standing in the middle and you're just joining these two people together and that's all you do. And it's a beautiful and amazing business model. You'll see why in a second. So this is a vehicle that I'm currently brokering out. So this is a... Um, a buddy of mine, he owns a car rental business and he has a Tesla on his fleet. Okay, so he listed that Tesla for $200. Me knowing that I have already have a customer list, even if you don't have a customer list, like you know that you can market, get into brokering. Because now, right, as you guys can see, the owner's price is $150. Like his price is $150. So me, I can increase that price by $50, even more if I wanted to. But I'm just doing this for the sake of this video. So my price is $200. So anybody who contacts me about this vehicle, yes, it's $200 per day to rent out this car. So now every single day this car is being rented out, I'm getting paid $50 a day just by me bringing a customer to that business owner. It's, I, I, I really wish we could talk here, but do you guys see how simple that is? I'm going to give you guys another example. Same thing with this Corvette. Uh, I'm not the owner of this Corvette, but I know my buddy, a, a good buddy of mine as well. He owns a car rental business, and he has this Corvette in his fleet. For going for $250 a day. So now I can put my price on there for $300 a day and gain $50 a day this vehicle is being rented out just by bringing them customers. And this is the power of brokering. There's no contracts you have to fill. You don't got to wash no cars. There's no risk involved. All you're doing is bringing a customer to this business owner. Mind-blowing, right? <laughs> like you, you, can, you can take off with this model. You could chill at home, do nothing. All you got to do is get good at marketing. All right, broker, as you can listen, no risk involved. Only responsible for acquiring customers. So this is a great route for somebody who feel like they don't have nothing, they ain't got the credit, cash, anything. I like just thought as a broker. Like just be willing to go talk to other business owners. And I'm going to show you how to do that too as well. See, I'm, I'm going to give you guys from A to Z. I got y'all. Don't even worry. Okay, so uh, within your area, right, all you got to do is type in car rental companies. Uh, I put Miami here. All you got to do is type in car rental companies in your city, whatever city that you may be in. Now, the first couple of companies that may come up are going to be Enterprise. They're going to be Hertz, Avis, these big companies. You want to leave those companies alone because they don't need customers, right? They have a whole marketing system and team that does that. You want to keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down until you get to the smaller car rental business, businesses. As you guys can see, it says like right here, it's super nice rent a car or Florida premium rental car, like these smaller names that you will see and you would know if they're smaller because they'll probably have like less than 500 reviews or something like that. Those are the people that you want to contact. So once you do, when you found those, you want to go to their place. You want to go run out a vehicle from them. Just go ahead and run it out for a day. Number one, what you're doing, you want to see how they operate and make sure they, they doing things properly, having the insurance and just, just running their business properly. And it's good for you to see on the back end too because you're going to be doing this too eventually as well. But what you're doing initially here, you're spending money with them. This is the best way to in, introduce yourself to somebody after you spent money with them. So you say you want to rent out for a day, you could just keep it for a couple hours if you would like. Then you go return that car, you want to introduce yourself to them, be like, hey, uh, this, this is what I usually would say. Like, hey, my name is Taiwan Cole. I've been in the car rental space about four years right now, man. And um, I also broker vehicles out for people as well. So, And I know I would love and I would be able to uh, bring you customers, qualified customers that will be able to, you know, rent out a couple vehicles from you every now and then. So let me know if that works for you, man. I've been doing this for a couple years now, so I know I definitely can add value to your business. Once I do that, this is a connection piece. So usually once they say, once they hear me talking, and, and of course they're going to be willing to, you know what I mean, do a brokering deal with me. And it's not me doing nothing crazy. All I'm doing is bringing them customers. So they're going to be down for that. Uh, right after that, you're going to ask them for like a broker list or their wholesale list. And this will be having, this, this will give you literally all the prices that they have for all the, their vehicles in their fleet. And this will be all their wholesale prices. So when you start to market these cars and all those things, you can look at the vehicle and add your price on top of that list, uh, that price list that they gave you. Super killer game, y'all. I'm telling y'all, 
If y'all just go execute that with the people and the companies within your area, you'll kill it. Um, so usually when they say yes and get the broker list, you want to go ahead and just take you a couple pictures of these cars, do it, take a couple videos, and post them on your Instagram. This is the first thing. Go ahead and just post them on your Instagram. It should look something like this so you can go ahead and start marketing those cars. Uh, but once you do that, and it's all about just marketing them. It's all about just marketing and bringing that customer to that business owner, and you go be killing it. I'm telling y'all, it, it works, you guys. It works. I just had a student of mine do that the other day. It works. So the second piece here is going to be joint venture, right? So a joint venture is a combination or two or more parties that seek the development of a single enterprise or project for profit, sharing the risk associated with this development. Okay, so the biggest difference between a broker and a joint venture is a joint venture. Now you're going to have to start taking more risk because now you're more involved within this business, right? So you, you're, you'll be splitting a task and um, things to do with this vehicle that you have that you're going to be running out. So this is a vehicle that I'm currently uh, running out for uh, my friend Deb at the moment. So this vehicle, um, its rental price is $150 per day, right? So it's split between the car owner and the business owner. Correct. So, as a joint venture, I like to do anywhere, anywhere here can be from 70 30, 60 40, 50 50. Me personally, I like to do 50 50. Okay, so let's just say this vehicle is listed at $150 per day. We'll be splitting the cost, um, I mean, the uh, revenue from this vehicle straight down the middle. So, I'll be getting paid $75 a day, and she'll be getting paid $75 a day. Um, that's just how I like to roll. At first, I was doing 60 40 at their side. But just getting more confident in knowing what I can apply to a person, I have to up my ante a little bit, right? So I deserve more of a, that, that income because I'm doing everything for them. So um, just to talk to you guys a little bit more about this too as well. So it will be just split. So how I like to work, they will be taking care of the car note, insurance, uh, oil changes. If something happens to the vehicle outside of the deposit, they will be responsible for it. Sometimes I may be split up with them too as well. If it's like a broken window and... You know what I mean? If it wasn't nothing naturally defected with the car, I usually like to help in there too as well. Um, but pretty much I'm doing all the car washes. I'm doing the check in and check out. I am talking to the customers, doing the whole nine. All they're essentially doing is paying and I'm doing most of the work. Usually how these go for these joint ventures. Uh, so for joint venture, right, it says risk determined in agreement, responsible for the daily task of the vehicle. Okay, so risk determined in agreement. You guys need to have an agreement. Okay, please do this. Don't just feel like, hey, this is my homeboy, this is my homegirl, we're doing business together. No, have a set time that you guys are going to be doing business for, how long that you're going to keep this car, what are the requirements, what are the rules, and what are the responsibilities for each and every party. So what do you need to be doing? What do they need to be doing so this business can consistently run and you guys don't have any descriptions on them? The, not descriptions, my bad. Uh, no disagreements on the back end when something ran out, right? So just making sure y'all have an agreement and it is positioned in a way that both you guys can succeed and just know what's going on. Um, it's, that's going to be so important. I'm telling y'all, y'all have to have an agreement. Um, and I'm going to give you guys another uh, person that I am working with right now. Currently, I've been working with him. It's about to be two years, man. It's crazy. Uh, this is my guy, Clay, right? It's one of my close friends from school who trusted me and tried out the car rental business, right? Which led to him gaining over $10,000 in just eight months with one car. Okay? One car. Right. And the crazy part of it, listen, y'all, he don't lift a finger. All he had, uh, listen, all he had was a car that he wanted to run out and I handled the rest. He was like, bro, I see what you're doing. Listen, I don't got the time really to be, you know, checking in people, car washes and all that thing. I'm going to just give it to you and let's just do a split. So I'm sending this dude, you know, $300 every single week, y'all. Like I'm just, every single week, I'm just sending this dude $300 a week and he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> right, but that's the power of joint ventures, right? So you guys got to know where on what side of the spectrum that you guys want to work in, man. And it works, y'all. Like, it works. And that's just a beautiful thing to see. So, so now let's move into secret number two, y'all. So I'm going to show you guys how to ethically steal over a thousand customers from your competitors completely for free. I'm um, super excited about this one too as well. So first thing first, who is our competition? Right, we want to know who are we competing against and who are we going to steal these customers from, right? So... You have Turo, you have Get Around, you have Hire Car, you have Sixth, Enterprise, Hertz, Avis, Alamo, and many, many more, right? So these are all your competitors. But I'm about to show y'all how to hit them with that. Hit them with that, uh, you know, we're going we go, we go, we to knock them out, right? So I pulled this directly off of the Enterprise Car, um, rental car <laughs> website, right? And if you guys don't know, Enterprise is the number one car rental company in the entire world. 
And it says right here that built on award-winning customer service. This is the number one car rental company in the world, y'all. And they talk about their customers more than anything. So what does that make? What does that mean you have to do? That means you have to focus on your customers even more. Okay? That means you have to focus on these customers even more. So that can be you adding, you know, small things to your business. It can be adding, you know, gift cards to your customers. It can be you adding, you know, certain... <clears throat> You know, benefits of, let's say, if a renter rents a vehicle more than three days, you take the price off. Or for a long time renter who's been renting for a long time, you let them just drive the car for free. Right. So having little small things that's going to boost that customer service is going to help out extremely well. Right. And you can just see why it's important because the number one person is doing it. They are always leading the pack. Right. So that's how you do it, man. And you could take that number one spot. No problem. We can take the number one spot, no problem, right? And just moving on to the second, right? The number two car rental company in the world, they start talking about they're bringing rental cars to your door. They're being more accessible. They start to understand that people are getting more lazy and they don't want to have to do anything. So you know what? Let me set up in a way where I'll just do the drop off. You don't even have to come to the store. Just, just click a button on your phone and we're going to bring the vehicle directly to you. So now we're adding a whole other thing to the business now. I'll bring the vehicle straight to your door. Adding these small little things to the business, right, is going to allow you to take their customers. And when I say take their customers, you're going to be dealing with customers who rent the vehicles from you, who's getting so much of a good experience, they will never go to these other companies because you're going to become more accessible to them. You're going to become more, you know, price effective to them. And uh, you're going to take over the game. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, y'all ain't... Y'all ain't ready for this, man. <laughs> Y'all can take that number two spot as well, right? And then lastly here, man, we talk about like Turo, right? It's the number one car sharing app in the world. And a beautiful thing about Turo is about how versatile they are. You can get a, a Toyota Corolla from a Toyota Corolla all the way up to a Lamborghini Urus in one place. That's literally have never been done before. You got Enterprise and all these places. They focus on sedans, trucks, and all these things. There's never been no one place that you can get all these cars from. So what does this tell you need to do? Have some different vehicles within your fleet. Have somebody who, who may need to go on a road trip. Have like a Toyota RAV4. Have a, you know, a little Camaro somebody wants to drive with a top down on the summertime and flex on the weekends. Or have an SUV when somebody got a huge family event to go to that needs a car. Like add different type of cars in your fleet so you can have a plethora of different type of customers coming in your door. And it's just going to lead to more referrals, more outreach, and your business is going to blow up, y'all. It's going to blow up. And you could take that number three spot too as well. Right? But in order to beat them, you have to do what they're doing, but do it better. Enterprise. When it, Enterprise. I went to Enterprise, y'all, and um, I started to see when they give people their cars, they just give them, you know, they give them a, a, a pamphlet. That word is always tough. That pamphlet and a, some Clorox wipes. So I'm like, y'all y'all give me some Clorox wipes? Man, you know what? Let me just let me put put, put in here, put in here uh, a Chick Fil A gift card, a Starbucks gift card. You know what I mean? Like adding little details like that, it was going to just spark the attention of the customer. And now you're just bringing great customer service, and they're going to be willing to invite more people and tell more people about your business, y'all. All in, we got to go all in. We have to go all in, y'all. Trust me, right? Now I'm gonna just throw this in here too, y'all. Can fight for the number two and three spot, right? Because I'm going for number one. I don't want y'all to get it misconstrued. <laughs> I don't want y'all to get it misconstrued like I'm not still in the business because I still do this. So y'all got some competition with me too as well. <laughs> I'm just kidding with y'all. I'm playing with y'all, man. So let's move into the last one. The last one. All right, so I talked about how we can get vehicles for free. I talked about how you can steal people customers and just adding great customer service within your business. And then the last piece here is how to operate your car rental business. Okay? And there's only two steps, right? We have check-in. And we have checkout. Check in and check out. So just diving into check in first. So me personally, the first thing that I do, I have a lot of customers that contact me through social media. As soon as I know they're qualified and they're really serious about this, I go ahead and just send the client a contract. Instead, inside this contract, it's going to have, I, I need your email. I need your name. I need a, what type of vehicle that you're looking for. Um, not type of vehicle, the vehicle that, you're, that you will be rented out. Um, I need your birthday. I need your license. I need everything. Okay? And then what I'll be able to do, and why I like to send it electronically as well, I can go ahead and run their license through background systems that I have, 
and it's going to check and make sure that they are a good customer and it's not a high risk customer who's who may be you know prone to accidents or just has a bad history in general i'm making sure that's good people getting into my cars so i can see that beforehand because if they're not approved then they have some bad history i can go ahead and just dead it without me having to waste the time of cleaning the car and getting it ready for that customer y'all know what i mean so after you sign the contract and they're good to go and they, they were like all right man we're ready to go uh, what you want to do, you want to take pictures of the vehicle. These pictures are going to be very important because you're going to need these for the checkout process and it's the back end of this whole thing. Now, these pictures are going to consist of the tires. It's going to consist of the wheels. It's going to consist of uh, the outside, the inside, um, any small things that you may need. Uh, I like to take picture of the gas gauge to see how much gas is in the vehicle. You're going to take pictures of the mileage to see how, what was the mileage. Um, that was on the car before you rented it out. You need to have all these things. Um, I like to take at least 20 of them, at least 20. Y'all need to have this so you can know what the car looked like before you end up giving this person this vehicle. All right, and then once you have those pictures, you obviously introduce the customer to the vehicle, letting them know how to connect the Bluetooth and if you have a lower vehicle, how to turn the car into heels and all those things. Once that's set up, you accept that payment, you can accept it through Zelle, you can accept that through uh, Square, you can set it set that through Stripe, whatever that works best for you, you can do that and just move on from there. So the car is out, it's being rented, everything is running smooth, now it's time for the return day, right? So when the vehicle is returned, you want to look over the vehicle. Um, you want to compare those pictures, okay? Make sure the vehicle looked exactly how it did before you gave it to them. If it didn't, we got some problems, okay? And that's when we'll move into taking that deposit a little bit too as well. But we'll talk about that. Uh, just check over the car. Make sure everything is standing. Make sure they didn't smoke in it. Um, look deeply into the car. Um, if you have to move the vehicle into the sun or uh, if it's more like if it's dark or anything, put a light on top of the vehicle. Like Really do a really deep inspection on this car. Make sure the pictures add up to what it looked like before you gave that person the car. All right? And then you want to get vehicle ready for the next customer. Um, once the vehicle is checked out and it's good to go, you, you, you like how it's looking, um, you want to go ahead and get that vehicle ready for the next customer to go ahead and get going. And quick tip. So quick tip for you guys. All right. You, we are not giving this deposit back until vehicle is in good standing. Right. So usually anywhere between 24 and 48 hours after drop off. Why do I say such a long time? Because I've had plenty of times where I was like, all right, the vehicles look good. All right, they bought it back gas. It's clean. It smells good. Here goes your deposit. See you later. Right? I do that, and then I get inside the vehicle, and I drive it down the road, and the car is wobbling, and it's shaking. Okay? Because I did not do the due diligence of making sure the vehicle was driving in good standing. It looked good, but the brakes was not... The brakes was all messed up. The tires was all, you know, wobbly. The alignment was off. And I ended up losing money on that rental just by not taking the time to drive that vehicle. So please take your time in this. Like I said, it's, it can be up towards 24 to 48 hours. And you're going to let that customer know that before they get in that vehicle. Right? That's also going to be in your contract too as well. So there's no confusion. Right? And so, y'all, that's it, man. Listen, that is how you start and operate a six-figure car rental business. Right? With no money or credit, I showed you guys how to get the vehicles for free, doing either brokering or joint ventures. Secondly here, customers begging you to rent their cars. I show you how to outserve all these companies. Right? Being better with customer service. Right? Being more accessible to the customer. Allowing them to not have to worry about coming to my office and doing all these things. No, I will come to you. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? And then lastly here, just a super easy operational process that a kid can run. Check in. Check out. Take pictures, look over the car, send that contract, make sure this person is valid, and then compare those pictures to the to the previous pictures that you took of the car before it was rented out, and make sure it looks exactly like that. Test drive it, make sure it's good. Rinse and repeat over and over and over again. All right, so can you see how becoming a broker or doing a joint venture allows you to start with no money or credit? Can y'all see that? All right, and also as well, can you see that operating a business is not that hard? So I know that y'all, a lot of you guys may come like, man, this, I got to do this. It's not that hard, y'all. It's not that hard, especially if you're doing weekly rentals. And then lastly here, can you see why customers will want to rent from you than your competition? Do y'all see that? I just want to make sure. So y'all see this, right? I'm not dripping. I literally gave y'all guys the three secrets, the three secrets on how you can start your own car rental business with no money or credit, customers begging you, how to run operations. Like, it's time for you to go execute now. 
And please use this information, y'all. I'm telling y'all, it works. Don't be out here just wasting the time or watching this video. And I know it was good information, but like, go implement these things. And bro, I'll be more willing to help y'all out if y'all need extra help on top of that. But y'all should have enough information to go out there and execute and at least get something going. But if not, and if y'all feel like that y'all need more extra help and y'all like more of a hands-on experience, and if you would like me to coach you and guide you to that process of, you know, doing six figures within a car rental business, all I want you to do, I'm going to leave a link down below. It's going to be a, um, a link to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. It's not going to be with the salesperson. It's not going to be with nobody who, you know, that works for my company. It's just going to be me and you. And we're going to go over exactly on what you need to do to be successful within this car rental business. Um, I want to be able to get to learn you a little bit more, get to see what your goals are, where I can help you out. And if you are a good fit for what I do, we'll move forward with the coaching. But if not, I'll be like, hey, you, you, need, you need to spend more time working on the grind and, and getting these other implementation things as well. Or if I feel like I need to refer you to someone who's better at the current position that you're in, that's what I'm going to do too as well. So, man, I'm, I'm super excited for you. Um, I, I want the best for you. Uh, I'm praying over you. And um, I just can't wait to see you be successful, man, and be able to leave that job or just add on an extra source of income to gain your time and freedom back or just to be able to go take vacation and enjoy your life, man. I think that's all we need um, to have more in our lives, man, because a lot of people are stuck in the poverty. They don't know what to do, and it's just tough and it's rough. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But um, now we got the ability to, to change that now, you know, so... Um, I hope this information was good, man. I hope y'all have a great rest of y'all day. Like I said, if y'all need any more help, man, don't be scared or afraid to contact me on social media at Taiwan Co. underscore. Or if you're ready for that one-on-one -on -one call, man, just go ahead and click the link on book a call with me, man. We can get this thing going too as well. But God bless y'all, man. I hope y'all have a great rest of y'all day. I'll see y'all for the next one. Go on.